I'm going to clarify some things about the Oklahoma Sooners football team. I was watching a podcast last night, and I'm not going to mention any names. Nobody is. I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just going to set some things straight about Oklahoma. I thought about jumping in, but I didn't. So I'm going to make a video about this and shed some light on what I think about the situation and a pattern that Oklahoma has always seemed to follow. But first, I'm going to bring Coach Switzer in. Take a look. Big 8 Conference. For the last 14 years, we win today. We have won 11 Big 8 Conference championships. Everybody I read in Southwest Conference, they talk about Texas in the last 10, 12 years has won two Southwest Conference. Houston, three. A&M finally won them one in 18 years. People don't know what it is to be champions. Oklahoma invented it. That's right, Coach Switzer. Oklahoma invented it. Thank you for hopping in today to Sooner Legends Podcast. I'm your host, the legend, Mike Wilkerson. And if you don't mind, could you give me a like? And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Because I drop, I drop content about historical stuff about OU and things of that nature. And also, if you don't mind, share the video with your friends. And uh, we're going to keep the main thing the main thing. So let's, let's talk about this. Okay. There was a heated discussion that I was watching on a podcast last night. And OU has always had a pattern. Now, I've been watching OU. I've been a fan, loyal, since 1971. The pattern I've always seen OU follow, and I'm going to take you down, down the road with me. 1972. Our then coach Chuck Fairbanks takes a head coaching job at New England. And not only that, we get put on probation, we get blacked out on TV, and we can't go to postseason competition, which means we couldn't go to a bowl game. So in 19, at the end of the 72 season, Barry Switzer takes over. So in 73, like I said, we didn't have no TV. We no TV time. You could only listen to us on the radio. We couldn't go to a bowl game. We couldn't. We couldn't do nothing. So in '73, we tied USC seven to seven. Then we won all of our games. Now let me back up a minute before I continue any further. I'm also showing you how the Talking Heads has not changed. Over the over the decades that I am talking about. Okay, so like I said, 1973 we tie USC. We win all of our games, but we couldn't go to uh, any bowl games because of us being probation. So 1974 rolls around. Our own local media, sports media, the national talking heads. Every write up in the newspaper. Since Oklahoma is on probation, they ain't they ain't gonna do nothing. And little Joe Washington said, and I quote, if they was if they was gonna allow us to wear uniforms and play on Saturday, we was gonna play football. And that nineteen seventy four season, we went undefeated. On probation, no TV, no bow games, went undefeated and was named AP National Champions for 1974. 75 rolls around. We lose one game to the Chihuahua Dog of the Big 8 and now the Big 12, the little yapping dog that's always at your ankles. 
like a nuisance. Kansas beats us. That was our only loss in 75. So we go to Missouri next week. We, uh, we couldn't tie them. We had to win in order to stay in contention for the national championship, which little Joe scored a touchdown, came back, scored the two point conversion, won against Missouri. 76 rolls around. We hadn't been on, on TV since 1972. We finally get put on TV for the 1976 Orange Bowl with Michigan. And we beat Michigan. 74-75. Back-to-back national championships. Now, up to that point when Switzer took over, we hadn't won a national championship since 55 and 56 with Bud Wilkinson. So there was a 1918-year lull right there when Switzer took over. So, end of 75 season, we don't we don't win any more national championships until until the 1985 season. Now, here again, here's where the talking heads, like I said, the sports media, our local media, getting it after that, at when we started the 85 season, we not only lost to Miami, we lost our starting quarterback, Troy Aikman, broke his ankle and had to start a freshman quarterback in Jamel Holloway. And the talking heads and the media and everybody else said, OU's done, ain't no way. Well, we won the rep. We won the rest of our games that season. And Missouri was a non-conference game. Or not Missouri, Miami. Miami, I'm sorry. So, we go to the 1986 Orange Bowl for the 85 season. And we beat Penn State and won the Natty again in 85. So that was 10 years between 75 and 85 that OU hadn't won a national championship. Now, fast forward into that god-awful decade of the 90s. We went through Gary Gibbs, Howard Schnellenberger, and John Blake. Bob Stoops comes on board. And at that time, let's see, 75, that had been 24 years of the 2000, so yeah, it'd be 25 years of the, of the 2000, no, 15, 15, I'm sorry, my math is bad, 75, no, it was 25 years, <laughs> shoot me, my brain's frozen, but anyway, 25 years. From 75 to 2000. So, Stoops gets hired in 98. And in the 99 season, we go 7 and 5, seven and five go to our first bowl game that we haven't been to in eons. But we lose a close game to Ole Miss at Shreveport. Next year, we roll around to 2000 and won all of our games. And beat Florida State in Bob Stoops' second year. Now, here is my point. OU is in a position right now that they are very dangerous. You got the talking heads, the media, every sports writer. They don't have us in a Chinaman's chance of hell of doing anything. But if you look at Brent Venable's record in his first three years at OU, Clemson, and back at OU, history has a way of repeating itself, people. And Brent Venable's history, if you look, 
I don't have his records before me. But go back and look at his first three years. When he first came to OU. When he, when he went to Clemson. And then he comes back to OU. <clears throat> we are on tr Brent Venables. His record is damn near spot on. To what his previous records indicate. In his first three years. And he has the players. He's he's got four players that are left from the Lincoln Riley era. Danny Stutzman, Ethan Downs, Jaleel Farouk, and Billy Bowman. Rest of them's his players. So I'm telling you people. OU is in a spot right now, and OU's history repeats itself. Trust me, I've been watching this team since 1971, and we are long overdue for another national championship. But history for OU does, does repeat itself, and we are sitting in a spot right now that we are very deadly, very lethal, that we could come up like a copperhead snake and bite you in the ass. Now, do I think OU's going to win the Natty this year? No, I don't. I said 2025 will be our breakout year. But from what I've watched at Oklahoma, stranger things have happened. And like I said, the way that the talking heads and the high ups in the media and Las Vegas has us what six and a half, seven and a half games next year. Mm -mm. I'm going to go on record right now. And I, I talked with another podcaster last night. <clears throat> I've had this gut feeling since the SEC schedule came down for us. I would not be surprised, would not be surprised one bit if what if OU walks out of Death Valley at Baton Rouge with a three to seven point victory over LSU would not surprise me. I just got a gut feeling. In Oklahoma, for those who don't know, we are third in the NCAA of home victories. It's hard to win at Norman. So jump down in the comments. Tell me what you think. I just thought I'd shed a light on my, give my, my opinion. I'm not calling anybody out. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just giving my opinion to what I heard last night. So this is the legend. Take care of yourselves. Be good to each other because tomorrow's not promised. This is the legend. We'll see you on the backside and God bless.